The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, The Money Masters. Money Masters. Good day, Money Masters and Treasure Hunters. Welcome to the July 2nd, terrific Tuesday edition of the Money Masters Show. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I am grateful for your presence here today. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better Money Master and to provide you with tools that empower human potential. Because living up to our potential is something we must master each and every day. So let's begin with an empowering belief or two. You know, the truth is that even in the information age, information is not enough. If all we needed were ideas and positive thinking, then we would all have had ponies when we were kids. We would, have all, we would all be living our dream life right this very moment. Action, folks. Action is what unites every great success. You should write that one down. Action is what produces results. Knowledge is only power, or really potential power, until it comes into the hands of someone who knows how to get himself or herself to take effective, massive action. In fact, the literal definition of the word power is the ability to act. Success leaves clues, and this is why you want to understand patterns, candlestick charting out there. This is why you want to understand how to read the message of the markets. Let me help you do that with over 30 hours worth of educational videos in my daily newsletter service and the education that is provided there. You get that each day. There's countless charts covering every type of market that you could uh, uh, that you could want to trade out there. You can do it for you can do it right now, risk free. It means you can. Do it no charge to your credit card. We've never done that before for Mastering Probability. Now is the time to take massive action, especially go as we go into a nice holiday shortened weekend out here. There's a number of trades that you want to be aware of, you want to take a look at. We're building a little portfolio out there. We're going to be getting ready to put our shorts on as well. Take advantage of this special offer, folks. It's a, a free test drive of Mastering Probability. It's not going to be up there for very long out there. So now is the time to take action. Success does leave clues. But it does require action, and I say take massive action. Decide now because it's in your moments of decision that your destiny will be shaped. Let's go check out the destiny of these markets here. It's destined for higher price. Right now, we've got the Dow up 51 points, straight out at 15.026. S&P up about 6 at 16.21. NASDAQ up 11 at 34.45. Russell 2000 up two points, joining in on the party now. Of course, it had a big day yesterday, so it might have a little bit of a hangover out there. We'll take a look at all of the indexes. You've got the New York Stock Exchange up another 22 points out here. Let's take a look at net advancing issues. A little bit light in the uh, shorts this morning, up 452. So it's a good signal here that the market's starting to get tired, that the breadth that we're seeing in the market is really now switching over to the heavily weighted stocks, such as Apple, uh, which is up this morning, Apple, Google, and so forth. Priceline, you got Apple's the leader in the clubhouse to the upside, up 850. If we take a quick peek here at uh, gold, it's back uh, four bucks right now, trading at 12.51. Silver down two pennies at 19.55. Light sweet crude up nearly a buck out at 98.93. Uh, you've got, uh, let's see, around the uh, globe here. Let's just check out what's going on over in uh, okay over in uh, Europe here. We did have the uh, FTSE was down about 40 points or so. It's now almost back to a break even. It's off six points. The DAX is down 63. We'll take a look at some of these charts here around the world as well. Our call in number 877-927-6648. Give us a call. Be happy to take a look at uh, your stock chart here. We're going to start off taking a look at the S&P 500. You know, we had a nice shooting star yesterday. That is a reversal candle. Uh, that is That high is going to be tested. I uh, presume that high will at least be tested uh, intraday. Whether it's today or it's tomorrow or Friday, it will be tested intraday. The high of that is 16 26. I think today would be a nice day to do that. It was a failure the first time we've had a failure here in the S&P 500 at that gap down that draft uh, draft uh, down draft day from June 20th out there that high 16.2462. We can see we've got a trend line to the upside. 
So let's take a look at that. You're coming off of the low out here from November 16th. My next touch point, your next touch point as well for the trend line should be that December 31st uh, low out there. So that's the trend line up to the top. We know the S&P broke it. You break a trend line, what price likes to do, it likes to get back there. Let me just move the shooting star thing down here. We can always put that, that label on there. But that's what the candle was yesterday. Now I'm going to show you the intersection of Main Street. I'm going to show you exactly where it is that the uh, e, that the S&P is likely to head to. Now, I don't know if it's going to be the S&P 500 or it's going to be the futures contract that's really going to get there. It could do it inter it could do it interest session here. But we'll take a look at the S&P 500. Let's assume it does it during our trading hours. Now we're going to take a look at the trend line coming off of the May 22nd high, and then we're going to go ahead and we can use the high here from June 18th. You can see you've got a red line, and take a look at where price is at. It actually says today. Today could be the day to put the shorts on here, and that's if we can get the uh, S&P 500 to get up towards that intersection uh, right around, looks like right around about the 1635 uh, level. Look, if it's off by a day or two, it's really not that big of a deal, but I suspect that that is the intersection that we are looking for where we'll see a complete failure. That will close Close the gap up there. And to close the gap that was created on June 19th, the low of that is 1628.91. So what we have here is a nice little range that is actually setting up here in the S&P 500. We'll see if that intersection of rising trend line and descending trend line is the actual ticket out there. So that is on your S&P 500. If we go take a look at the spies here, I haven't put this, these lines here in the spies. So let's go see if we can uh, do that here. We'll dress up the spy chart, see what it uh, does. Let's Buy chart could be a tad different. Let's see, we come off of the November 16th level. So let's do this here. November 16th, we'll use that December 31st uh, uh, level there. Okay, so we've got that. That's uh, We're going to use a, a red line on uh, that one. I'm going to get rid of the retracement uh, areas here. And we're going to use a uh, we use a black line on the way down on uh, this one. Well, well, maybe we'll just use red. We'll just keep it all in uh, red, white, and uh, blue out here. And so if we take a look at that uh, trend line, yeah, you can see that that set of uh, that set of conditions really doesn't meet up or connect here until you get all the way back into the middle of July. So really, we're going to be paying attention here to the S and P 500, to the uh, to the ES mini because that is really what uh, sets up. So inside the spy here, so we can go ahead and get rid of that. Well, that really sets up here. We did uh, see a reversal yesterday. You did the uh, test of the downdraft from June 20th. That had 321 million shares. Yesterday was a nice up day, uh, up day with only 131 million shares. I don't think so. What these spies want to do, they want to go at least test the June 19th low, 163.38. If we take a look at the retracement level here from the high to the low out there, it really sets up 163.97-ish as the area where we will likely see the reversal come from. We'll know when we see some volume. And the volume-wise here, if we take a look at yesterday, as I mentioned, it was up with, excuse me, 131 million shares so far today in 45 minutes of trading. We've got 23 million shares to the upside. So it starts off with a bang and goes out with a little bit of a flurry out there. And that, I suspect, we'll see a light volume day today, probably less than 131 million shares out there. That is on our SPY. Let's go take a look at our Dow. Let's look, take a look at the Dow Diamonds, and we'll switch over and take a look at the uh, uh, at the actual Dow. The Dow now trading back inside the uh, the area where it has struggled here for the past three trading sessions. That is the downdraft from June 20th. That is the high of 149.88 out here. Uh, we can see yesterday the test on the diamonds, 4.8 million shares going against 14 million shares. Boy, that talk about a failure on price and volume. You saw that one was extraordinary yesterday. Uh, of course, every test up there has been on light volume. at 6.5 million on June the uh, 27th. We had uh, 6.7 on June 28th. Yesterday, 4.8. So far today, a million shares. Not too bad, not too shabby in the first 45 minutes of trading out here. Uh, but they will have to continue up with that pace. But what the uh, Diamonds actually want to do, believe it or not, they want to get up to about 151.33 to 151.05. That will go ahead and close that gap from June 19th out here. Of course, they're going to need a little bit of help. Let me switch over on my uh, my data feed here. Let me see. We do have IBM up this morning. Okay, so in fact, inside the uh, Dow, you've got really two, four, six, eight, nine of the uh, Dow 30 are actually eight now of the Dow 30 are in the red, but nothing too heavy. You got Boeing is off 42. Uh, United Technology is down 30 cents. United Health Group up. About uh, 22 cents. Uh, GE off 16. Pfizer off 15. So no real big damage to the upside. And leading the charge 
uh, to the downside, I should say. Leading the charge, the upside is IBM up a buck and a quarter, JP Morgan up a buck twenty. We're going to go take a look at the XLF and see what's going on inside that a little bit later on. So inside the uh, diamonds, expect them to uh, try to get up and tag the 151.33. Maybe it's only 151.05, the actual downdraft. That also has 9 million shares. So you're coming back into a breakdown session. You know, we teach you how to buy breakouts. You want to really sell breakdowns. It's really the same. It's the same principle out there. You're just coming back into an area where the market broke down, and when it does it with lighter volume, says that the selling pressure should then resume to the downside. And it'll be a big move down. It'll be a big uh, A to B equals CD pattern that is forming out here in the uh, marketplace. If we go over and take a look at the actual Dow itself, uh, right now we have the uh, Dow trading out at a uh, price level of uh, 15,024. It's up 50 points right now. Let's go ahead and pull that stock chart up on the uh, screen. Give me a moment to uh, do that. Uh, session high so far, a bit higher, about 20 points higher, I believe, getting up to a level of uh, 15 0 37 You're at 15, no, not really, about 15 points. You're at 15 0 22 right now. Now, uh, what the Dow has not done that the Diamonds have, the Dow has not gotten up to tag the uh, top of June 20th. 15105 that is really where it's headed to. Of course, the low here of June the uh, 19th is 15112 That's the uh, number that it wants to get out and uh, move up to. Uh, where will the uh, Dow get up to the 15163.79 level? Eh, maybe not, but it could. That's the 0.618 retracement of that A to B equals CD down. That's off of our A leg. Again, May 22nd all the way down to the low. That came in on June the uh, 24th out there. Uh, let's go take a look at the uh, Russell 2000. Let's go see what the Russell is doing. Had it been a big day yesterday, and by a big day, I mean getting all the way back up to the point seven eight six retracement level. You know, we've just been talking about the SPY and the diamonds. SPYs and the diamonds, they're struggling just to get up to the sweet 618 level. Take a look at this Russell 2000. It has been on fire. The point seven eight six level off of May 22nd's high down to the low of Monday out here, gives you a price level of 994.23. What did it do yesterday? 993.60. That is a beautiful thing. It made that point seven eight six level. When we go over and take a look at the IWM, it says to me that, you know what the Russell 2000 wants to do? We're going to have to pay close attention to this one. This is going to try to go tag 1008. 23 out there. That is the May 22nd high. It's traveling with inside that uh, bar out here, and it looks like that is really the uh, target. It could always rest here and wait for the others, others to catch up as its work is done. But I suspect that what it really wants to do, it doesn't want to doesn't want to let everybody have uh, be at the party, and it too wants to uh, it too wants to maybe check out a little bit higher price. That would be a thousand eight. 23. But we need to know the work at the 0.786 level has been done. Let's go check out the ETF, see what the IWM is doing here this morning, see what it actually did uh, yesterday. Uh, the IWM right now trading at 98.32. Uh, no reversal signal or anything like that inside the IWM yesterday. A little bit different as we took a look at the Dow, the S&P uh, out here, the uh, as well as the New York Stock Exchange. Yesterday's volume, not too shabby. I uh, did uh, 37 million shares the prior day. 46 million shares, the prior day 40, well, I guess it's lightening up, but coming into 43 million shares from June the 19th out here and staying with inside that candle. So volume light, but really not not too bad out here. Of course, it's going into 68 million shares, and that is the high from May 22nd. So 100.38 could be in the cards here for the Russell 2000. 877 9276648051 right now. We'll be right back, folks. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts has officially launched at TFNN. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind software, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the market for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, and even months searching to find. As part of our introductory pricing, we're offering licenses available at only $59 per month. We're so confident that you'll love this new, outstanding piece of charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Lock in your low price today by ordering your copy at TFNN.com. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Rise, I say. Rise. The Dow is up 63 points right now. S&P is up 8. NASDAQ up 14. Markets doing what they're supposed to be doing on light volume, setting up that uh, C point of that A to B equals CD down. As we check here in the 30-minute uh, uh, futures, we're taking a look at the swing point that was created yesterday at 1230. Uh, that swing point there, the high is 16, 20, 50. You're trading inside it right now. Uh, that did volume of 68,000 uh, contracts. Uh, you're coming into it. So far here with 133,000 contracts, we've got six minutes left in the trading session. So 16, 20, 50, that most certainly is going to get tested. You're coming in there with volume. You can get a close above 16, 20, 50, whether it's this half-hour session, the next half-hour session. That will give you your confirmed A to B equals CD up here. As we take a look at that, again, our A point is the low that came in at 9 o'clock uh, in the evening on uh, Sunday. Uh, that's, uh, that's our A point. Our B point was 1230 yesterday afternoon. Our C point now is the uh, move uh, this morning out here, and that move coming down into the uh, 9 o'clock session out at 16.04, a little bullish engulfing, a uh, candle at that session, and then a wide-ranging bar. So you're coming off the C point somewhat explosively here, and uh, that 16.20.50 most certainly will be tested. Your 1 to 1A to B equals CD takes you to 16.32. At 16.28, uh, you have the .786 retracement. Uh, uh, a sell pattern out here, and that's the one that's coming off of the uh, time frame from June 19th out there. Let's go up to uh, Concord, Mass, to our man, uh, Mark. Mark, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Uh, drying out, Steve. How, I hear it's wet down there in Florida. 
Uh, yeah, but that's kind of normal for us. We expect those uh, showers, you know, and uh, uh, and so yeah. But uh, yeah, but your be... license plate doesn't your license plate say the Sunshine State? Well, now here's the cool thing. Uh, the cool thing, I think, you know, I, I, I moved down here 30 years ago from the Detroit area. And uh, one thing that I have uh, noticed is that the majority of mornings that you wake up, you have blue skies. So if you're an early riser, which I am, uh, you have blue skies. You start your day off with blue skies, and that is a beautiful thing. Well, any any day that you look, look up and get a positive attitude, it's a is a beautiful thing, I think. As it Tom is, would it say. is. Now, I know you're calling about the S&P 500. You sent me a uh, email well, yesterday. I did, and, I, and the reason why I sent you that email, and I actually tried to call you, uh, but I guess you guys were having some audio trouble from what Al said. Yes, yes. Okay. And um, um, the reason why I sent you the email, Steve, was on that email the person said, and I, I was looking at this from a pattern recognition standpoint, the yeah. email said this first four or five months of this year dictates what we're going to have to do in the next six months. So okay. I said to myself, hmm, everyone's saying correction. But if you believe in pattern recognition, this guy is saying the pattern says first couple months dictates the rest. So I wanted your three cents on that. Well, I, I, I mean, uh, the the question that really be starts to take uh, I, I, when so when I take a look at that, I have to break it down into time frames. So on the shorter term time frame, on a, a daily, a weekly, a monthly time frame. So during the shorter term duration, my expectation is that the S&P, because that's what we're talking about here, is going to pull back. Uh, let me see here if I can put that number up on the uh, screen. Just give me a moment here to do that. And so the S&P is going to uh, pull back, should pull back to about uh, 14, looks like about 14. Oh, I'm on the weekly chart. Somewhere around 1465, 1464, somewhere around there. Now, if we go take a look at that, I, I think so. We're going to use 1465. Now, if I come over to the uh, monthly chart out here, the monthly chart. Now, and the S&P has broken, you know, above its uh, trading range out here, you know, a 16-year, 800-point uh, trading range. So, if the S&P break uh, pulls back during this six-month unseasonal cycle, and it could be any time between now and October 31st out here, 1464 or so is going to really bring, bring price right back down into the bottom of this rising price channel here on the monthly chart, coming off of the uh, March 09 lows. And so long as this price channel here is not broken, and so long as the other indexes, meaning the Dow, the Russell 2000, and the NASDAQ, are able to stay above their breakout levels inside the uh, Dow, that breakout level really being about the, you could, you know, you could use uh, 14,000 as the uh, number out there. If, in fact, it can do that, that really then sets up the energy for the markets to move higher. So I believe we're, you know, the, you can take the market, you can also break it down into two six-month cycles out there. But what people need to understand is the best way to trade during those six-month cycles. In this case here, during this unfavorable seasonal cycle, we, shall, we, sh we still should expect to see a, a pullback here in the marketplace. Now, on the bullish side, if I go over and we take a look at what the S&P actually did here, and we're taking a look at uh, last month. Hey, Mark, can you stay through the break? I will. Okay. So we're going to come back. We're going to go ahead and dissect the uh, S&P 500. We'll look at the monthly, the weekly, the daily charts out there. Are you too like Mark? You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. We'll be right back, folks. With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. 
No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow is up 51 points. S&P is up 6. We're going back out to Concord, Mass. To our man, uh, Mark, we're taking a look at the S&P 500. So, uh, you know, we're in the unfavorable seasonal cycle, Mark. And if we take a look at coming back to uh, 2000, so the last 12 years out here, uh, in uh, in all except for one of those years, we've seen a, a market pullback during that uh, cycle. Now, the last three years here, 2012 was about a 10% pullback. In 2011, a 20% pullback. In 2010, 13%. I haven't actually done the uh, numbers on it. But what I do know is that 200-period exponential moving average, that is the minimum target area. And that's why I was coming up with that uh, 1400 uh, dollar level for you. Now, as we take a look at the S&P 500, one of the bullish things that it actually did here last month, the month of uh, June, was it came back and it tested the area that it had broken out of. And the area that it broke out of was that October 2007 high, as well as uh, coming all the way back to the uh, March of 2000 high out there when it was up at the 1552 level. And when you break out of any kind of consolidation, a market is supposed to come back and test that area. Now, you like to see more than one test, but what we, the market did do uh, last month is it did go ahead and test that level. So it does say that we need, you know, could the correction be over? Sure, it, it absolutely could. I still think based on the volume down patterns that we've seen here off of the May 22nd low and the light volume on the way up, I think that that really bodes well for at least uh, coming into on the spies into that 147 
uh, area out there. And it would also just really be a test of this uh, longer-term rising price channel out here. So all of that is, is, uh, is a nice setup. Now, inside the S&P 500, if in fact that's what takes place, the S&P will have come back into the bottom of its, into the trading range which means you know, below the lows of 2,000, below the lows of 2,007 out there. And that's where things get a little bit tricky. But what we have to do, Mark, is we have to go take a look at the other indexes and see what they're doing. So if we take a look at the Russell 2000, for example, you know, that is up near its uh, all-time highs again. The Russell 2000 broke out of its uh, price uh, trend uh, back in April of 2011, came back and failed on the very next month and came back inside it made the lows back in October of 2011, and it broke out for good here uh, in January of 2013. So so long as the Russell 2000 on its pullback, and I don't see this taking place, uh, uh, holds the 868 level, the Russell 2000, you know, is saying that that breakout was real, and not that that necessarily will go ahead and, re uh, you know, lift all the uh, boats out there, but as long as it stays outside there, it also has friends. And its friends are, how about the NASDAQ Composite? The NASDAQ Composite broke out of its trading range here, uh, and it broke out on uh, February of 2012, broke out, came back, tested it, uh, broke out again on June of 2012, came back and tested it in November of 2012. And so long as the NASDAQ Composite stays above, we'll call it the 2900 level, its breakout is real, and it has more upside potential as well. So I suspect we're going to see the pullback. Uh, everybody's going to think because the S&P has moved back into the uh, trading range boundary on a, a daily basis that all of a sudden, you know, people are going to start getting extremely bearish. And uh, when it touches, when the S&P comes close to uh, touching that rising uh, price channel out here and the other indexes are doing what they're supposed to be doing, whatever pattern sets up, that's when we're going to want to go ahead and pull the trigger and go long. It doesn't mean that th that, that happens on November the uh, first during this six-month unfavorable seasonal cycle. Right now, price is really the key thing, and coming down into those trend lines is really what's key. So that's more my take of what's really going on technically in the market out there. And I don't know how that actually, you know, fits in with, uh, you know, the video that you were looking at yesterday. How, how does yeah, that? Well, all, all he was saying is that based upon what he, he has seen in the markets over a period of years, um, the first X number of months, dictates the rest of the um, trading year. And he said based upon what he has seen in the market this first couple of months, he thinks the rest of the, of the calendar year will be higher. So yeah, that's what yeah. he was saying. No, and, so that's what I was and, looking and, at. And it's good. You know, it's, it's, it's really it's all probability management. And, you know, I mean, I can show you different probability management things out here. I'll do that, in fact. Let me uh, hopefully I didn't. But, and, and, you know, Steve, yeah. you can probably get 100 different professors and come up with 200 different solutions. Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't talk about the lunar structure too much. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I do. It, there, there are certain aspects that actually have been working and working pretty well. And one of those is uh, it's called the moon conjunct uh, Pluto. And the last one came in on uh, June 24th. So on June 24th, we had a, a full moon that was taking place over the weekend. We actually had the moon conjunct uh, Pluto, which has marked the bottom. It's marked bottoms. It's marked uh, tops out here. It's worked really, really well. Uh, at, at identifying uh, those uh, areas out here. Uh, what I know, no matter what indicator is used, whether it's going back and taking a look at my study of the seasonal and unfavorable seasonal uh, cycle uh, or taking a look at uh, any studies out there, I know that the patterns that we trade, uh, price and these patterns, they override anything that's out there. And so that's why we just really pay. That's why I say right now the volume is moving to the downside. Price is really doing in the stock market doing what I expected it to do, what I really wanted it to do, in order to be able to set up the next uh, short opportunity out there. And I won't change my opinion on that until I would uh, see a change in volume uh, or what have you. And uh, so, so I got a short-term outlook. Look, my ultra short-term outlook. I mean, I'm long now. I went long at 16.03 in the ES Mini for a trade for the day. And I know I'm going to run into some turbulence here in a little bit at 16.20 level, but I think 16.32-ish is a, uh, is a potential deal out there. So it's just staying with inside the patterns that we trade out here. And I do think that we see these markets really uh, go higher. Maybe that means inflation uh, as well starts to uh, kick in as Uncle Ben starts to taper off. Maybe the money starts to flow out. I don't know what causes it, but chart pattern-wise, it looks like uh, prices do move higher in the longer term. The question is, if you the market's going to pull back on the S&P into those areas that we took a look at, you know, is that the type of heat that, that someone wants to take? And it may be. 
Um, you know, Please, that's, question yeah. for a question for today. Yesterday we had a pretty good run up, and then we sold about half, maybe two thirds of it off. You think we'll do that today in anticipation of the holiday? Tomorrow is a half day. You know, I won't know till we get there. Yesterday's sell off was to be expected, and you know, I, I really. I call the 30-minute uh, futures chart really the EKG of, of what's going on inside the markets because it works so beautifully. And so coming into the 11 o'clock session yesterday, you know, my, my recap and my message of the markets was, hey, this market here needs to either work, its well, uh, work, its say, work itself off by moving sideways or pulling back. And it pulled back. And the pullback here wasn't even to the 0.618 level. So it was really doing what it normally should do in working off that overbought uh, uh, condition. Right now, we're not really overbought here just yet. As we approach 1620, we could get there. But we're coming into that swing point with volume. That swing point, uh, which was from uh, 1 o'clock uh, yesterday, uh, 12 noon yesterday, I had 68,000 contracts. So uh, we're into that with 150,000 contracts, and during this 30-minute session, we've already got 57. That B point's going to be taken out. 1620 should be taken out, and that sets up a, a move to about 1631 out there, 1628. And then uh, you start to get to an extreme overbought uh, condition, and, yeah, you can see the market uh, sell off. And the key will be how does it sell off and what kind of volume. So to me, the markets are responding uh, so beautifully. I mean, it has been a trader's paradise out there. It's about really trying to time the longer term trade that's been perhaps a more difficult one because we've been going up against uh, downdraft areas with volume to the downside. I think that, that timing the uh, shorter term time frames has been much easier because it's really doing the sell off yesterday didn't surprise me. That's what it really it was going to do one of two things move sideways or move back. And it moved back, and it was really the measurement of the move back that, uh, you know, all that it really did is it got back to basically the 0.618 retracement level. It didn't get down there exactly. 1603.75 was the number. It got to 1604.75. You know, that's good enough for my work. Yeah. Hey, Steve, what are you going to do on the 4th? You know, just uh, watch some uh, fireworks, take it easy, rest, uh, you know, doing uh, four hours of radio here these days kind of takes a little bit of, uh, of wind out of your sails, but just relax and uh, probably, you know, scan some uh, stock charts, see if there's some trades out there. Yeah. But uh, look. Hey, you got to let, you know let me know what you thought of my book. I will. I did get a chance to uh, look at it over the weekend, uh, but I, I, I probably will get some time this, week to, this weekend to read it a bit. I'll well, do I hope that. You have a good, I'll make I sure, hope you, I'll make sure I, I read you, a, a few chapters out there. Yeah, uh, I hope you have a good fourth, and please do not drink and drive. Ah, don't worry about that. Never do that. Never do that. Never hey, do thanks that. so okay, much Steve, for calling. Have, have, have a great fourth. Have a great fourth. You bet. You do. Bye-bye. All righty. All right. Folks, the uh, Dow is up 67 right now. You've got the S&P up at 8. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see here, uh, gold is back at uh, 6 bucks. King dollar pulling back now, so you've got king dollar only up by uh, 26 uh, ticks out there. You know, part of that, really the euro, I think it was during the last hour, we were taking a look at the uh, euro. We were saying, okay, it's in uh, reached the oversold uh, territory. It probably needed to work itself out. Oh, uh, here's the euro Japanese yen. It's taking out its highs out here. Here's your energy in the uh, markets for our markets to continue to move higher out there. But if we go take a look at that uh, euro, U.S. dollar, let's go see what it was doing. And, again, there, the markets are working so orderly out here with a set of tools that we uh, use. You can see as we were coming down into that uh, 10 o'clock uh, session here, it was in the extreme oversold uh, territory. You did get that bullish engulfing candle. That formed right here at uh, 10 a.m. And now we've seen a normal move, a normal bounce. If we take a look at what that's going to be out here, if you come from the most recent swing point high at 3 o'clock this morning all the way down to the low at uh, 10 a.m., the uh, 618 level, 130.435 is the uh, target. Uh, you could see a move up to the 0.786 area, and that would be right around, looks like about 130. I don't know why this is. Uh, oh, I had another. Right, right around 1.3057 or so. But you can see the market's really very, very orderly uh, out there. Uh, I got a request to go take a look at the natural gas uh, contract, so we'll go take a look at uh, that from uh, Terry, I believe, in the uh, den. And then we take a look at natural gas. Natural gas doing what it's supposed to do, which is now try to get back inside that the rising price channel. It's a long-term channel. It uh, broke that area. That goes back to the April uh, 2012 time frame. And it broke through there. Uh, that was also breaking a 0.618 Gartley buy pattern uh, that had formed out here on June the uh, 26th. Now you've got price trying to get back inside there. If price gets back inside, 
Uh, then it was a false break to the uh, downside, and that could set up a uh, you know a fairly nice trade out here. What I would do is I wouldn't step into natural gas or UNG, whatever you might be trading, until this candle here from June 27th is cleared, and that high out there is 3.757 out there. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, it looks like uh, you could get down to about 340 out there. So that was on uh, natural uh, gas. Let's see what we have here moving in the uh, markets uh, this morning. You got Apple up about 10 bucks here. Let's go check some of these things that are moving to the uh, downside. Uh, the leader in the clubhouse to the downside, off about 4%, is the Vita. Uh, that is used to be, I don't know if it still is, DVA, one of the uh, one of the IBD uh, 50 stocks. Looks like maybe it might have fallen out of. Uh, favor here. Let me refresh my uh, chart, make sure I have all the active uh, data. Right now it's trading at 116.24. Uh, I know this is active data. So this thing here is gapped down uh, below an area that it had broken out from. Uh, the first, this breakout here, a shorter term breakout that we're looking at inside this equity, uh, was back on April the 2nd, did it with 2 million shares. Uh, you then had a, uh, another sign of a strength out here with 2.7 million shares back in May. Uh, now you're having a real sign of weakness. Uh, this weakness here, you've got 2.1 million shares uh, today to the uh, downside, uh, breaking a, a swing point that, uh, you know, that was the uh, breakout level. So they're trying to hold this up. The problem here with uh, DeVita, now that it's broken and now that you have volume off of the uh, top, we can see it's also getting into the oversold uh, uh, territory. But now when you start to get volume like that off of the top in a shortened and a holiday uh, trading uh, session out here, it could spell some real trouble. And the trouble here, the trouble, the trouble here in DeVita becomes the May 21st, 2012 swing point, 5.7 million shares, and that price level is 85.95. Now, this, this is beautiful because this is the exact reason why I decided that I needed to learn about technical trading. You see, I used to be a 100% fundamental trader out there. And what I didn't know was, well, you never know what you don't know. I couldn't understand why stocks like this that were running really well, you know, that were up towards its highs, that, you know, seemed to have some pretty good uh, momentum inside it, why all of a sudden they could have big, huge drops. In the case of David, it's not really a huge drop, but why could they have huge drops? You know, stocks where they have a... 15, a 20, a 25, a 30 percent uh, uh, down day out here. And what I found in the first tool that you want to make sure that you have on any equity that you're trading is you want to understand where that high volume or where those high volume bars are. And in the case of uh, DeVita here, the high volume bar that sticks out to you is May 21st, 2012, because when things do fall apart, they will fall all the way down there. And that's where you have to do the type of cash management to say, you know what? Maybe the run on this is a little bit over because you've now gotten a signal here with some sub substantial volume uh, down here by uh, gapping down and doing it this morning. 2.2 million shares in only the first hour of trading out there. If I were in DeVita, I would say beware. Beware and make sure you've got some stops in place out here. Uh, let's go take a look at, let's see, what else do we have that is uh, dropping to the uh, downside? You've got the ZEP for Led Zeppelin here, Z-E-P. I don't know what they uh, do. But they did come out with net income, 6.2 million versus 8.6 from the uh, prior year. They did revenues of 185 versus 176, but they're down 15% this morning. So let's go see what ZEP is uh, up to. I have never taken a look at the, this stock chart. Down with some big volume as well. So let's go see what uh, this is uh, doing here. And the volume that it's down with today is 294,000 shares. So it's not a, a real liquid stock. I mean, on an average day, it might do 50 to 100,000 shares out there. But as we take a look at it, you've got uh, 294,000 shares to the downside. Your high volume bar on this looks like that's where it headed to already. How about that? So here's a perfect example. That gets, takes you back to June 22nd, a year ago. The high there, 1349. The low so far this morning, 1375. We'll be right back, folks. Patterns, profits. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. 
You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, folks. I'm Steve Rowe with TFNN.com, and the trend is your friend until it changes. A free special report is now available on the homepage of TFNN.com, and if you have money in the markets, this free report is a must. If your strategy is buy and hold, this report is a must. If you're a day trader, a swing trader, a forex or options trader, or just getting into the markets, this report is a must, and it's the second best gift you'll ever receive. Look, if you buy a stock and the general market is trending in the other direction, you've reduced your odds of buying at the right time by 70%. Instead, let me teach you how to get that 70% advantage plus. The plus is a free trial to my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. There's no upfront deposit, no charge to your credit card, and I can press decades of education into each daily newsletter. This is a limited time offer, so act now, and I'll teach you how to take the trend and turn it into your best friend. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. Act now. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow up 67 right now. S&P is up uh, 8. And let's go peek in here on the uh, XLF. The XLF, what a big sell-off it had yesterday. Not so much volume-wise, but when we take a look at what it did, it, it uh, created a, a shooting star, a big shooting star candle. Now, a shooting star is the exact opposite of a hammer. So you got a hammer candle that's going to take place when the market is trending lower, and that uh, provides you with a good area of support. And then you have a shooting star, so just the opposite. The market is trending higher, and it sells off, and that provides you with a fairly decent area of resistance. Now, I find hammer candles work better than uh, shooting stars. I don't know the reason why. They just do. And we take a look at the uh, XLF yesterday. Not only did it uh, form a shooting star and close back below the uh, gap here, from June 19th, but it also tested that May 22nd level. That had 95 million. Yesterday's test was on 59 million versus even the uh, gap down day of 61 million and 102 out there. So the XLF now is starting to show some chinks in its armor. Right now it's back up at 1968 volume so far, 14 million shares. Let's go out to uh, Louisville to uh, Bob. Bob, uh, thanks for calling. 
Thanks for holding. How are you doing this morning? I'm fine. And thanks for taking my call. My hey, pleasure. Can, can we look at IWAM and what you think it's going to do uh, kind of short-term and mid-term? We can. I think the IWM here looks to me like it wants to actually go test the May 22nd high out there, 100.38. It's trading inside that bar. Yesterday it got up nicely into the .786 uh, level. And, uh, you know, with the markets, I think, wanting to go ahead and complete an A to B equals C to up, uh, it could head to 100.38. It's possible that it has seen its high, uh, which would have been uh, yesterday. Uh, but are you long, short? Tell me what you're doing. Well, I, I bought a position in TZA yesterday thinking that uh, um, this weekend, this sometime this week would be the high. Yes. And we would go ahead and have that uh, midterm uh, ABC down. Yes. Are you and, still and thinking that? or? I, yeah, I am. I, I am. I'm just waiting for the other patterns to complete. And what I'm really focused on here is I'm really focused on, I'd say, the S&P 500. Now, inside the Russell 2000, it has been the strongest of the four ETF structures out here. And what I mean by that is on Monday when it was pulling back here, June 24th last week, uh, it was only making its way down to the gap up from May 3rd there. That had 51 million shares, and as it came down last Monday, it was down with 58 million shares. That says that, well, for whatever reason, Bob, there's some real strength inside the IWM right now. I know it had big downdraft days, and you know, at one point in time, I was short the uh, small caps and TZA. But I think your better short out here is something other than the IWM. It could be the uh, Dow. It could be the S&P 500. Uh, if you take a look at the other, uh, if you take a look at the other ETF structures, for example, the Dow made it all the way back to the April 22nd swing point, and it came back there with volume. I would suggest on the short side that at some point in time, maybe you take a look at converting over when the market does get ready to turn down. Maybe you take a look at converting the TZA over to something that's a little bit weaker at the moment. You know, it could change. It could change at any point in time. But right now, the IWM is the stronger of the four ETF structures out there. Even the Qs uh, themselves, you know, had made a deeper retracement. They got well below the May uh, third level. Didn't make it all the way down to April eighteenth as the Dow did. Uh, but uh, you know, even the Qs would be a, a weaker spot. And if we take a look at the uh, Spy, uh, the Spy itself on the uh, daily, it got down to. Let's see, did it get down to, did it get pretty close to getting down to the April 18th level, but it was coming down there with volume. So I would say the spies and the uh, Dow would be your two better plays out there. But do you think the, uh, the IWM is going to go ahead and run for a few weeks? I don't, I, it, it has the possibility. It really has that possibility. It could just hang right out here around the .786 level, but it has that possibility of making a run for the top out there. They're just saying really tighten up my top then. I would. I would. Okay. Oh, okay. Thanks, hey, thanks so much, Bob. Thank you you. Thanks so much Bye -bye. for calling. Hey, folks, have a, a great Tuesday. Basil Chapman is up next. I'll be back uh, this evening at 4 o'clock. Have a great afternoon. Great morning, folks. Bye-bye now.